Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Brianna and welcome to my YouTube channel, Brianna Codes. I am a senior software engineer. Specifically, what I work on is Java-based applications, um, microservices, and building large-scale distributed applications. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, controlling instantiation of your beans using something called conditionals. So there's different types of conditionals, both uh, conditional on property as well as like conditional on beans or conditional on missing beans, in which if you already know a little bit about IOC and inversion of control and auto wiring in spring, this will be kind of a second step into making sure you're able to really make use of that loose coupling. If you haven't watched any of my previous videos, maybe on IOC or anyone else's videos on IOC and auto wiring, please give that a check first because it'll kind of help you understand what's going on and what this even is, right? So I'll give you an example here. We have some messaging service interface, right? Um, and that messaging service interface just has a void, uh, void method, right? Send message, easy enough. And we have two um, service, spring services, which implement that inf interface, right? So we have email message service, which is just printing out send an email. And we have text messaging service, which is just saying sending a text message. Right now, obviously, it's not being used anywhere. So if you start up the application, you, you won't have any issues, right? So the application is just going to start up fine. Tomcat started on port 8080, right? But if maybe if we made some, let's say, communication service, right, which is a top level service, and this service takes in um, some messaging service, and we auto wire that in there. So generate a constructor here, and on post construct, uh, which is, this is just an easy way of saying, like, after this bean is created, let's do something. Even better. Contact. Customer. Whatever it is, right? And then we're just going to take this messaging service that send message. Now, you you can kind of see it here already, uh, what's going to happen. But let's just run the actual application. And it's going to give us some information here, right? Basically, what Spring's going to try to do is it's going to say, okay, well... You have these two services, right? You have your email message service and you have your text message service. And I don't know which service you want me to use. So how are we going to do that? So this is where we have um, the first one we'll be talking about is conditional on property. So let's say um, at conditional on property on property. Um, and if we look into the conditional on property interface, it has a value. It has having value and it has match if missing. And we're going to look at all of this, right? So first is value. So what is the value in our application properties file that's going to um, run this? So let's say, um, let's say message dot type. And we'll say having value. And we'll say for this one, it will be email. And we'll say match if missing true. So what does that mean here? That means that in our spring, in our application properties file, if we have um, message.type, which is defined here, and the value is email, yelling at me. Sorry, it's an application properties, not a YAML. <laughs> um, and we have message type as email, then we're gonna create our messaging service. But we have one other thing going on here, and as you see, it's this match if missing is true. That means if nothing is on our application properties file, this is the bean that we wanna use. So this is kind of our default. So let's do the opposite, and let's do it for text messages, right? So let's say message.type having value of text, and match if missing is false. So kind of we have three different things that are gonna happen. First is if we go ahead and have no message, we'll notice that our issue here or our error here will go away. And you see sending an email. So what did that mean? So it used this match if missing is true and it sent an email. Perfect. Makes sense. Um, now, if we go into application properties and we do message that type and we change this to text and we restart this. 
whilst he's sending a text message. So you see now Spring's able to say, um, through this method that we're using of, you know, having this conditional on property, Spring's able to say, okay, I understand. Do you want me to send a text message? Or okay, I understand. You want me to send an email? And that's really useful. But maybe sometimes we won't want to use a property follower. We won't want to say on every single one, okay, if there's an email messaging service, then I want to do this. So let's, let's try something else. So let's do another service, right? Um, or maybe it would be a util, whatever. We'll just call it a service. Like maybe we'll do email notifier service. And what is that email notifier service going to do? It's going to basically, when it comes up, it'll just say, um, <clears throat> and it'll just, let's say print. You're going to send some emails, right? Uh, 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 start up notify. Okay, whatever. Um, so, and this is, let's say, conditional on some bean. So instead of going in and saying on every one copy and pasting this and saying, okay, message dot type having value email, and I could just copy this and it, it would work, let's say, because this is dependent on that. But the easier thing to do here is I can just say this needs to be dependent on or this instantiation instantiation is dependent on the creation of the email message service. So now if we go here and we change this to email and we rerun this. You're going to send some emails and I, it runs after sending an email because that's just how uh, obviously one's being created before the other. But now you're able to say, okay, this is conditional on being this and that. Okay. So, but what about now we need a text message notifier service, right? So let's say we have text message notifier service. Um, and maybe this one is conditional on a missing bean. So like it's conditional on the fact that email message service doesn't exist. Um, and like, let's say that's just our default functionality. Now we're gonna send text messages. So um, what we could do here is again, we'll just do the same. We'll use post construct because it's just the easiest and public void and we'll do like do notify and we'll just call it, we'll do some system dot out for Dylan and we'll say, you're going to send some text, I guess, right? Because your email message service isn't there. So I guess we're sending text messages. So we'll change that to text and we'll restart it. So these are kind of the three main conditionals that you use on a daily basis. There's plenty of other ones. Um, so now that you understand kind of the high level concept of it, uh, you can go on and, and try the other ones. There's conditional on, on expressions, conditional on missing class, conditional on if it's a web application or not, uh, conditional on having some resource there. Um, so there's tons of conditionals in Java. Uh, so this is very useful, like I said, for just controlling the instantiation of your beans and, and making sure that your system is loosely coupled and that you're able to kind of have this nice like open structure of how you're developing your applications anyway guys that's it for this video i hope you learned something about uh conditionals in spring if you guys enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe if you've made it this far i really appreciate it it helps out the channel and check out my other videos you'll probably see something on the screen here with uh, a video that's recommended for you thanks guys have a good one bye